VGK blows a late lead and falls to the Blackhawks in Chicago in a shootout 3-2. to two. Your Locked On Golden Knights, your daily podcast on the Vegas Golden Knights, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi again, everyone. Tony Cardasco along with Chris Golick. You can find us on Twitter at Tony Dasco, at TD Chris G, at Lockdown VGK. And of course, you could find us on our YouTube channel. That is Locked On Golden Knights. We're brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So last night, Chris, Bruce Cassidy really miffed at this team at the VGK after losing that game, blowing a late lead, and they fall to the Blackhawks by a final score of three to two on Tuesday night, he was measured somewhere at around 11 on the rockometer on a scale of 10. He was, I mean, that's when you could tell he's really miffed because he's swaying back and forth. Should have watched the post game. I didn't watch it. I should have watched this one, I guess. Oh, no, he he couldn't even make eye contact with the reporters. He was so mad. That had to be a miserable flight back to Las Vegas. But Tyler Johnson with the uh, tying goal in regulation, Alex Petrangelo, okay, I want to go there first. And again, a delay of game for a second consecutive game by defensemen hitting the puck over the glass. Uh, Let's start there. Let's talk about Tyler Johnson. Let's talk about how VGK after that on the power play, uh, the penalty kill, the uh, Chicago power play, Max Domi wins uh, wins the draw. uh, They had the two-man advantage. Uh, Tyler Johnson, again, he pots it, and where does he go? Where does he go with the puck? He goes top, stinking shelf. That is the biggest issue I have with Larry Brossois. There's not a lot of goalies that are saving that shot right there. I don't care if it's Vasilevsky or Brossois or LT or Robin Leonard or et cetera, et cetera. It's a good shot. Credit the Blackhawks for a good set place of a uh, set play, of course, Patrick Kane with uh, the dime on that. I think that's going to go kind of forgotten in that play. So, I mean, uh, listen, everyone's a little, you know, flipping out right now about this one and find it kind of funny that a guy named, I think, Gutman, I know what his first name was, but he, he doesn't have a picture on, on NHL.com. He was the first uh, goal scorer for the Blackhawks last night. The Blackhawks are not going to go 0 and 82. They might want to. But no team's going to go 0 and 82. They're going to win a couple of games. You know, yes, uh, the word clunky was used by Darren Millard. I think that's actually a great way to explain the game. But seven games in a row without losing in regulation. Haven't lost in regulation since the All Star break. Let's just pretend for a second. VGK, they beat Nash, or yeah, they start against Nashville and then they go to Minnesota and lose and then they rattle off like a nice winning streak. Like, it wouldn't be that big of a deal if you look at it like that. So this is a loss where you're not, never going to be happy with a loss, especially against the Blackhawks. But this is one of those losses when you look at the big picture, just, just relax. Just This is a, the team is turning a corner right now. And maybe a game like this can help the team just to remind them that they're not invincible, that they're not undestructible, that they're not bulletproof. And that they'll have to work a little harder against Cal Gary on Thursday. So Patrick Kane, I just want to talk about you. You talked about the dime pass, but he almost called game on that shot at the end of. And it was uh, no OT goal, second period. shot. But keep going. That was just an absolute blast. Uh, the breakaway, of course, the slap shot, and then Tyler Johnson wins it in the shootout, and VGK with an offer in the shootout. Um, is that because Logan Thompson wasn't there to coach him up? Because Bruce Cassidy made some odd decisions. Um, Nicholas Waugh and Shea Theodore are pretty good in the shootout. I don't have numbers to back that up in front of me, but Nick Waugh and Shea Theodore, definitely Shea Theodore might be our best shootout player. Jack Eichel, I don't recall having much success at all this season. <laughs> um, Marchessault has been fine. I don't mind, I don't mind Marchessault going and taking his shots. Paul Cotter, he's been money. I mean, you know, listen, Paul Cotter, Wa Theodore, some combination of those three should be the should be the first three over the boards in my opinion, and then you work it from there. I know you got a lot more high price talent, so to speak, with 
Jack Eichel, with Riley Smith, with March so with William Carlson, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, and Jack Eichel, I said William Carlson, and it made me think of his between the legs goal. Jack Eichel almost had the goal of goals for the VGK with going almost going between the legs on that little mini breakaway. Oh my goodness. That would have been absolutely remarkable if that would have gone. So uh, Tyler Johnson, the lone shootout goal goes five hole that time on Brossois. VGK, a team that came out really flat in the game. And Cassidy said afterwards, actually the only player that he praised was Brossois, but he said VGK didn't play a very respectful game. Good he note. said that uh, they broke down a lot on basic system coverage. Well, listen, they're not going to, Blackhawks aren't going to go 0 and 82. The Golden Knights are not going to have it every single night. Like this is, after you have a nice little winning streak, a game like this, it's forgivable maybe isn't the word, but you look at the big picture, two points in first in, in the in the division. I think we're either tied or plus or minus one points in the West right now. You go and win against Cal Gary on Thursday. You have a good, here, here you go. You have a respectful effort on Saturday that hopefully is a victory against Dallas. This game gets forgotten about. I know last season it was razor thin from being in the playoffs and out of the playoffs or being up a couple spots in the playoffs. So I get all that. A point was left on the table, but we still have 12 out of the possible 14 points right now, Tony, if my math is correct in the last seven games. So it's a spot where just relax, everybody. Just it's okay. It's okay. Bad game. Fine. Whatever. We're not going to go 82 and 0. The Blackhawks are not going to go 0 and 82. Brassois had a real good game. Are we going to see more of Brassois? We'll talk about that, uh, I think, in our third segment a little bit more. But I'm okay with Brassois last night. Really good game. He got beat gloves side one time at the end off of a a rocket from uh, between the circles that no one stop and find whatever. And the shootout, I don't care. Shootouts are dumb. We're just going to not even talk about it anymore. So move forward. It's all good. Everything is still fine in Vegas. Uh, And Henderson, besides the wind. uh, Turnovers last night. Uh, VGK had eight giveaways uh, in the first period alone. They wound up with 11 for the game, so uh, not very good in puck protection and not good enough in front of Brossois to win um, the second game in a row, though. Uh, I mean, the veterans, they have to know better. Like, if you're going to go try to go high off the glass, and then Petrangelo's argument was not very good in saying, Oh, it was deflected, and then they show the replay like four or five times. He's taking a shot there. I mean, that's that's what I he's know, supposed to do. Um, you know, listen, it was, it's. I mean, they have to be more aware of what. No, happening. no doubt, you got to be more aware. And there's so many times you see these players go really high off the glass, and you're going in real time. You're going fast. You're trying to, you know, make a play. And probably 95 times out of 100, he's going to make the play the right way. And the puck catches an edge. He just gets a little low on it, grips stick a little bit lower, goes off tip, whatever, whatever it may be. I mean, the delay game is such a weird rule. Like I get why it's there because it was becoming just an easy thing. Hey, fire the puck over the glass. Okay. We'll start giving some penalties now. And a rule like that, giving the ref. So let's say you change the rule to where the ref has their judgments. They can make a, a judgment call if they feel it was on purpose or not. That would be just gasoline on what will be coming out of control fire. Something just toppled in my house. I don't know what that was. Um, so at least it, was, it wasn't asbestos like we saw my for my house here. Oh God! <laughs> yeah. So you know, it's a weird rule. I get why it's there, but yes, Petrangelo, our highest paid defenseman, has to be more responsible. No doubt. And your guy, Riley Smith, thought he had another goal. He thought he had a goal. God, I time. thought that was in the first and second started, time I watched it. He started he to hit sell right it. on the curve in the corner <laughs> where the post meets the crossbar because that's the way it bounced out. And first time, I, I was waiting for the horn to come. Not the not the goal horn, but like about 15, 18 seconds goes by, and they ring like the siren to stop play, like the end of the period. That happened like when the we're going way back a few play a few years now. Um Golden Knights Sharks season one, where, you know, they review a goal on the fly while the, while the play is still going on. And then the timekeeper buzzes the game and stops it. I honestly thought that was going to happen a few seconds after, after the goal. Well, and uh, again, we saw last night uh, on that nice assist uh, to get the game started and Keegan Colasar 
uh, with the first goal of the game, and I thought Holy it could be a laugher. He finally he's starting to hit the net. That Listen, you thought very well. I was waiting for one of us to fire a puck across the room. And, never mind. <laughs> um, so or made my drink, my cup with the with the cup and with the puck in it. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, I, I wasn't watching too closely at the start of the game. Uh, daughter was at tumbling, so I was kind of peeking at the score every now and then. I see four minutes in, we got a goal. Okay, all right, the route's going to be in progress, you know. And then I'm listening in the car on the way home, and all of a sudden, uh, game gets tied. Okay, fine, whatever. They weren't going to get a shutout most likely anyway. And then, okay, okay, okay. And then they get the goal, take the lead. And I'm like, okay, things are looking okay. And I watched the third period somewhat closely. And then I'm like, uh, okay, this is a little, little nerve. They never got that insurance goal. Is you got to pull happened, away right? at some point. Yeah, you got to pull <laughs> right. away. And then it actually, we were saying goodnight to the kids. So TV goes off, obviously, and we're doing all that stuff. And as I'm chatting with Christopher, I just peek really fast. I'm like, ah, oh. so let me go and watch the overtime. And, you know, it was a fun overtime. It was exciting. It was a, it was a fun game. It was a fun game. Bad result, but, you know. We're not going 82 and 0. Blackhawks aren't going 0 and 82. Let's just uh let's move forward. Let's move forward. It's all good. It's all good. That, that game though was more on VGK than it was on the opposition. Oh, and, no doubt. VGK, yeah. listen, Blackhawks executed, they got a victory. Good for them. But the Golden Knights lost that game more than Chicago won that game. Well, one thousand percent. And yeah, listen, was we should have started. Trap game. Cassidy, this starts at Cassidy. I don't know how much the, the players watch, like what the coaches they always say. watch it. They always. I think watch some it. of them definitely do. I think a percentage of them definitely do. They want to hear what what he's saying about them. Absolutely, because he does say things about them. He definitely says things about. He them. He might and, not say say it to them in person, but he knows that they're watching his videos. Absolutely, post game. Yeah. So you know, <clears throat> pardon me. The trap um, game angle was awesome though because he he didn't even mention Chicago. Is that what you were saying? Yeah, that's exactly it. I called this on Saturday nights after. After the Tampa game, he was talking about the systems of Calgary, of Dallas, of Colorado. I don't know if you mentioned any of the other teams, but he did not mention the Blackhawks. And again, does that mean the team didn't prepare properly for this game? I'm not going to go that far, but there's a little bit of fuel on the fire because the team didn't execute. They didn't look good. You know, maybe there were other more important issues on the players' minds. Who knows? We want We don't know. Our boy Jack Eichel's on a heater, as they say. Three goals he in the last five. He loves games. that low, low uh, blocker side. <laughs> he almost went. That. He almost got it through a second time as well. He almost scored another goal. He did. Time. He had the same thing. It was a three on one, and I was actually watching the Chicago feed, and they even made the comment. They said he's not. He's shooting there. He's definitely shooting there. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, coming up next, uh, we'll talk about Mark Stone's move to L- LTIR. We'll have some clarification on what that all means <laughs> right here on Lockdown Golden hopefully, Knights. Hopefully. <laughs> Allegedly. It's uh, past the midway point of the NBA season. And, of course, now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat free bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet does not win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It is safe, it is secure, and it's super easy to win. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to the point scores to three-pointers drained. And, of course, you could talk about the spread, the money line, the totals, all of that, and all of those player props, which are fantastic. And there's so many more exclusive bets, like the two times three, two three-pointers scored in the first three minutes. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn a lot more. Make every moment with FanDuel. Of course, it's an official sports betting partner of the National Basketball Association. Welcome back to Locked On Golden Knights. Tony Cardasco and Chris Golick. We come to you each and every morning, Monday through Friday, here from Las Vegas. And we talk about VGK. You can find us on our YouTube channel. That's Locked On Golden Knights. Hmm. Please check that out and subscribe. And I'm laughing about you said YouTube. So funny story here, Tony. Um, okay. I was selling uh, spots for a sports card break yesterday morning. And it was kind of going slow. So I was finishing the upload process for the YouTube show that we did yesterday. 
So I do my thing. I'm kind of typing. I'm talking. I'm selling. I'm kind of working it all together. And after my show is over, after I finish my break and selling my cards, um, I get a couple texts like, hey, I think you uploaded the wrong show. And I go on check. I go on check YouTube and YouTube. People are like, I swear this is the show from yesterday. I put the wrong show up, so I went and fixed it. That's okay. So. I was mispronouncing things anyway during yesterday's show, right? So uh, when the Golden Knights placed Mark Stone on LTIR, finally, uh, it cleared about nine and a half million dollars in cap space. Um, you wanted to clarify something about an emergency loan, right? Maybe. So someone, I forgot who it was, and this is all, there are so many rules to this and like the rule book, we don't see the rule book. We see segments of it and things like that. So I found um, the screenshot of what someone sent to me talking about. So let's start. Hutchinson is on an emergency loan recall, whatever that terminology is. The screenshot that was provided, it looks like it's from the 21-22 season. I'm assuming it's still the same. But basically, if a team doesn't have 12 healthy forwards, six healthy defensemen, two healthy goalies, they can use the emergency situation and according to Puckapedia, it will as long as they have a cap hit of one million or less, Hutchinson seven hundred seventy five thousand, then the salary cap is not in play. Basically, they can exceed the salary cap for a cheap player. So, how this plays out to the Mark Stone situation? My comment was, okay, let's pump the brakes, people. They needed money for Hutchinson Stone's LTIR was a given anyway so they just pulled the trigger on it no big deal right well maybe there is a little more to, than meets the eye because according to puckapedia hutchinson could have been up and they did not need to put stone on ltir so maybe there is a little more gasoline on this fire on this trade fire right now and maybe this does mean a move is intimate and the big thing i'm watching for and we'll hit, hit on this a little more in segment three as well is Will Hutchinson be sent down? I honestly thought I might have woke up to the news that Hutch was already sent down to the AHL again because Hill supposedly just has a bump. Or does he? Yeah, we don't know where that bump is at. That's the strangest thing. So currently, when I looked at the numbers here, as VGK is cooking the books, uh, Definitely. Eight, <laughs> $8.8 million is cleared. And that is enough. 8.8 point eight minus 775, that would be 9.5 for Mark Stone. So the math checks out. Right. So that is enough. Uh, cap space is what we were saying yesterday initially uh, for VGK to make that move for Patrick Kane or whomever. I think it's going to be Kane. I think they're really laser focused on Kane. I'm with you. Um, yeah, I'm starting to believe more so. Um, and maybe there's a there's some sort of a waiting game. And I'm sure that, uh, of course, Pat. Uh, Brisson, okay, I keep getting Brassois and Brisson confused like you did, right? But perhaps he wants uh, to try to get a contract extension out of this deal somehow. So maybe that's maybe. the hold up. Yeah. So they had think, uh, the GM I, of I don't the think, Blackhawks. I don't think, yeah, but I don't think I don't think that uh, he wants that Kane wants to just be a rental. Well, I, oh, I think I don't. I think home. Kane knows. I mean, I didn't think it. I think it depends on the situation. Um, you know, if he goes to like a mid-level team that you know, has the cap space, then sure, maybe he will want to stick it out. But I mean, all signs are still pointing to somehow he ends up with Buffalo next year just to go back home and, and do that thing. Or, or heck, I mean, is there a world that exists where he becomes a rental and then he goes back down to back to Chicago next season? I mean, you never know about that. He might want to have uh, some of that Connor Bedard, uh, you know, have that experience. Um, so they had the GM of the Blackhawks actually on pregame yesterday he said on the nothing. Chicago feed. Then they replayed it. He during said the nothing. Well, he said he said what a GM is going to say. And, well, we haven't had any you know hardcore discussions yet. We're still waiting on Patrick Kane. We haven't talked directly with any teams yet. He's kind of got the poker face going. I'm not buying any of that nonsense. I'm right. He's talking they're, they're They have to be talking because this is not a trade. OK, Patrick Kane, uh, Brisson picks up the phone, right, and says, OK, uh, trade him. Here's uh, Dallas, Chicago, Toronto, New York Rangers, uh, you know, tap Bay Lightning, make it happen for one of those five teams. Patrick will take any trade, send them out there. This is not going to be like the money ball scene where Brad Pitt picks up the phone and negotiates a crazy three-way deal for someone to take some money, for someone to do this, and he winds up with all the all the marbles afterwards. It's not going to happen that fast. So 
I feel very confident that the tires have been kicked and they're still being kicked. And maybe there's a couple semi deals in place. Well, if, you know, if we're going to trade Patrick Kane, we're really hoping to get a second, a prospect and a fluffer. I was throwing something out there. You know, we're looking for something. And in return, maybe we'll take on, you know, as a courtesy, we'll hold on to 20% of his salary. You know, who who knows? I'm sure, I'm sure every GM in the game right now, considering Patrick Kane, knows exactly what it takes to get the deal done. I'll say it like that. Uh, Mark Stone ain't coming back. He's no. He's not coming back. He's not. He's not coming back in the regular season. He's not coming back in the postseason. I think he's done. He's missed 14 games thus far. I'm not buying the playoff talk, surgery. Tony. I'm just, listen, you're you're believing the Golden Knights right now, Tony. Stop No, it. no, no, no. I'm believing. Was he on the dance floor at the gala? No. He can't even dance, man. Come on. <laughs> You're 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 buying the VGK Kool Aid right now and stuff like that. You have to look into the comments, Cassidy. Oh well, you know. Listen, at first, the only thing VGK said, the only thing was out indefinitely. That's it. Okay, that's the first smoke signal. Okay, and then they knew the media, they knew us, they knew everybody was going to say he's done. Uh, other people are having doctors come on explaining the rehab process, how long it's going to be like, you know, and VGK just quietly says indefinitely. And then they sit back with their arms crossed and let the let everything happen. And then Cassidy. Well, just and again, here's here's why this gets me, Tony. Let's this is important right now. Cassidy says, I think it was right before or right after the all star break. Well, the more <clears throat> we extend the season, the chance we possibly see him. Many respected media groups mentioned Cassidy's comments, but the VGK never put his media availability on their Twitter or on the NHL VGK websites. And then now McPhee, well, we got checkpoints he's got to hit and dates, you know, important dates to hit. We'll see if he hits those dates. So VGK has put out the fog. They've put out the signal flares. They've put out the smoke screen. They've put it all out there just enough to say, well, we thought there could be a chance. We never said in the beginning it was season ending. So they're doing what they're supposed to be doing and masking whatever the true situation is. And again, this is not a VGK exclusive thing, folks. All teams do this. The Blackhawks did this. The Tampa Bay Lightning did this. Every team is very weird about the way they talk about their injuries not because they're slimy car salesmen, because the NHL allows this to happen. So you have the GMs doing what they do, and it's a chess game. Some GMs are playing checkers, some are playing chess, some are playing Minecraft, whatever it may be, you know, but that is their goal here to have people not knowing what's going to happen while doing all this in remaining compliant with the NHL rules. So stop drinking yeah. the Kool-Aid, Tony. All right. Well, psychologically, last night, I felt, you know, VGK, the team, when we talked about them and the personality and wanting to keep the country club atmosphere going and all that. Now, all of a sudden, they see all that money is cleared. Now it is reality. Now they're just like, oh, man, back to woe is me. I'm telling you, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I think. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, so 25... I'll give you that one. I'll argue the other one. I'll give you that one. <laughs> 25 games remaining in the season. Wow. How many games does VGK have to win to get there, to even make it into the playoffs right now? I mean, I think uh, the numbers dropped by uh, about five and a half games since the regular season fired back up. So I think 94 points is our number for confidently. Well, 70 something. We're at 73, 73 right 73. now. 57 games played, 25 games left. So, I mean, listen, 10 victories, 10 victories, one overtime loss gets us right at that 94 number. And so basically the team could play by that calculation 500 hockey and get into the playoffs. Um, I don't want to see 500 level hockey. I want to see uh, I want to see triple digits for the VGK as far as points go. That will comfortably have them no less than, in my opinion, second place in the Pacific, possibly first place, you know. Like I said, the first nine games after the All Star break were pivotal. We haven't lost in regulation yet. We're five zero five zero and one right now. Cal Gary, hopefully, if the VGK shows up, that should be a winnable game. Uh, Dallas at home, the team's going to come out firing on Saturday night. I hope they can get the job done. And really, that's the big measuring stick Saturday. So again, 
is this game against the Flames possibly a is it possible to have two trap games in a row? We're about to find out on Thursday. <laughs> Six o'clock start for Vegas. That's a weird one. I'm it's assuming. on TV because it's, it's on a TNT TV. game. Yeah, that's what it's it's a national go game. And there's only what I think there's something like seven or eight national games this year. They really got job, man. Not a lot. Not a lot of I national mean, games. Look what happened last year. You got looking ahead. You got Colorado then on Monday, and then uh, Carolina, Carolina, New Jersey, and then and then boom, there's the there's the trade deadline. So it's uh, it's, gonna, it's about to get really really fun and exciting. Not just for Vegas, but Every team that's in the hunt, there's still a good, you know, what, four or five big name players. And then there's going to be a whole slew of complimentary players that are going to move around right now. And I think the only question for Vegas isn't if they're going to make a deal. Are they going after Kane? Are they going after Timo Meyer? Or is it going to be, you know, give it two up or three depth Timo, places? give it up. No, Timo. He's not coming here. Fine. No. Give us Kane. I'll Saint, listen. Saint I'll Louis take Kane. Got into I'll the gamble mix on, on, on Meyer yesterday. St. Louis trying to quickly go after the rebuild. Uh, you know, I don't understand that. I don't team, understand right? why Timo Meyer would be the answer to rebuild that team. I don't know. After you've sent two similar players elsewhere. Like you're yeah. going to build that team. Like I thought rebuild that team through the draft if you're going to do it. And then go for Timo Meyer or the equivalent in two or three years from now. Well, they have a lot of assets, obviously, because of uh, their trades. Uh, one of our, or the only goalie that I actually like in this organization is Jordan Papierny. And uh, he was brought up to Anderson, to the Silver Knights yesterday. We'll tell you what that could mean for the VGK as uh, Crick, uh, Chris will dig in a little bit deeper. We'll get back to more of that right after this on Locked On Golden Knights. Welcome back to Locked On Golden Knights. Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick from Las Vegas. Again, you can find us on Twitter at Tony Dasco, at TD Chris G, at Locked On VGK, and of course, our YouTube page. Please subscribe, folks. It's tons of fun. And I'm not in the fog and I'm not in Technicolor anymore. So this is actually something that our viewers can watch. Uh, so, man, and I'll tell you what, a lot of the comments, everything I fire out there, is WTF already. We are loaded for a Friday show. I got to tell you that. Our guy, I say, I say he's our guy because he's such a good guy. Jordan Papierny uh, brought up from the Ghost Pirates to the AHL Silver Knights. So what does that mean for the VGK as far as everything is going with salary cap and movement? Um, Papierny, if uh, he is around, if he stays here, then that could mean that something is definitely up, something is wrong. It's more than a bump uh, for Aiden Hill. So looking at the Silver Knights schedule, first of all, they play today, Wednesday, right? Today's Wednesday. They play today, Wednesday, and tomorrow, Thursday in Cal Gary. And then they come back home on Sunday to play Cal Gary again. So we have Hutchinson up with the VGK right now. It would have been a very tough thing maybe for Hutchinson to play last night jump on a plane and be the backup goaltender or the starting goaltender for the for the Silver Knights especially in a back-to-back scenario where you know this he should play one of those games Patera could very likely start both of those games as well so what does this most likely mean Aiden Hill might simply have the bump they wanted to play it cautiously You'll see Jordan Papierney back up Patera for both games. Maybe even Paps gets lucky and gets the start on Thursday. Who knows? That'd be really cool for him. And the way the HSK season is going, I think it'd be great to see them take a look at one of their ECHL goalies and see what they got. You never, you never know, right? You might have lightning in a bottle. Who knows? Or they made this move because there's a little more to the story here and that Aiden Hill has maybe a bigger bump. Maybe it's a Charlie horse instead of a bump. I don't know what, what the heck it is. The NHL is so stupid when it comes to us trying to figure out uh, what's really happening. So people like me and Tony sit here and we, uh, we uh, have to guess. So possible scenario, simply bring the other goalie up from the ECHL, give him a couple of games to back up uh, Patera. This way we don't need to rush Hutchinson up to Calgary for those two games. And also the unknown of whatever this bump is. So it might be best just to play it safe. Or maybe not. Or maybe there's something bigger happening. The big thing is on Thursday morning, let's see what happens with Hutch. Because I think today 
you definitely, you're not going to see anything. You're not going to see them sent back down. But it could happen tomorrow. If Hutch doesn't get sent back down tomorrow, I guess you could have three goalies on the rod on the VGK roster and scratch Hutchinson, and it would still be okay. So most likely, let's see if we get Hutch, if we see Hutch called called back to recalled, that's the word, recalled on either today, tomorrow, or Friday at the latest. If that doesn't happen, there's something going on. There's something going on. A little okay. Something. Our guy, uh, Paperni, 6'5 and 4, 17 games, 3.78 uh, goals against average. And of course, in the ECHL, I mean, there's goals plenty. So that's uh, something to watch. Hopefully, he's able to stay here and get acclimated. He's never been uh, to the AHL level. I look you know, back at his stats. So he's been toiling in the ECHL and in lower divisions. So this is a great move uh, for him. He's been a guest. You texted him last night, too, right? Yeah, we went up and back a little bit. Maybe we'll get lucky and we'll have him on the show, uh, you know, maybe tomorrow maybe tomorrow or Friday, or maybe we can record a little segment for the weekend and we can show it on Monday or something. But, yeah, just a real nice guy to talk to. Um, he's the one. So we've interviewed two goalies on the show. We talked to a draft prospect uh, over the summer, and my son Chris dying to play goalie, right? So I, I asked him about, hey, comfort my nerves. Make me comfortable to be a dad of a goalie. and he didn't give me anything. The first yeah, goalie we talked nothing. to, he gave me nothing. It was, well, it's tough. And, you know, like, okay, thanks. Thanks for nothing. Um, but then we talked to Papirni and I asked Papirni the same question, maybe probably my second question in because I'm, I'm selfish and I wanted a question for me, not, not the fans. Um, so I asked him, I said, listen, same thing. Comfort me in letting me be good about my son possibly being an ice hockey goalie. And his comment was, listen, he's not going to get checked from behind. He's not going to get, hit and stuff like that as much sure the pucks are going to be coming at his head and stuff like that but there's there's good equipment you know so basically his argument was being a goalie can be safer in the long haul so i felt better about that okay so what is vgk doing with all these maneuvers between the pipes and what is up with logan thompson we've forgotten about him because we thought that he could be back by now Mm, Um, are they starting too too soon Is VGK is VGK trying to be too smart? I have to always ask this question, and I'm not being critical or anything else, and I'm not being snarky about this, but are they trying to be too smart with the way that they maneuver the salary cap? I have to ask that question always. I mean, listen, let's let's I'll I'll, I'll take it a step deeper. They've screwed the pooch with the salary cap, as we've seen a couple of times, the Donoff. Riley Smith potentially being healthy, not being able to join the team and going farther back. I mean, we're never going to live Colorado this one down. Game. The, the Colorado, Colorado game. game. Uh, basically a winner-take-all game for the Ugh. amended division situation in the COVID season with the the amended divi- oh, you know, weird divisions. And wait all a that. second. That's DeBoer's fault. That was DeBoer's fault. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so, it yeah, wasn't. I mean. It was, it was Kelly McSee. VGK does have their notable – salary cap issues and it's a tough game to play because there's all these weird different rules you got to follow and for every rule you try to circumvent there's a rule that can circumvent you so sure are they trying to be too smart yes is it gonna work maybe i mean listen there's a world that exists right now where first of all lt will be our starting goalie sometime this regular season i think he is coming back that is Kool Aid that I am drinking from right now. No, no, he'll, because he'll the be first back. comment from Cassidy was, "It's not going to be season ending." Just stop it right there. Cassidy right, right. doesn't like to play the koi card. Sometimes that's a spot where I'll be. I'm on. I'm on team uh, Cassidy at that spot. As far as everything else happening, there's a world that exists. Let's just say we get Patrick Kane. There's a world that exists where maybe line one come playoff game number four of the first round, Jack Eichel is centering Patrick Kane and Mark Stone. Yeah, potential is there. Not stone, not stone, but maybe Fine, Marsh put stone on line too. He's coming back, Tony. Before the set, he'll Mark Stone will play if the if the VGK makes it to the second round of the playoffs. Possibly, you see him out there game two of the first round because it would look terrible if he came back in game one. But game two, no one would think anything was up. We saw last night one of the things that could come back to plague VGK in the playoffs on nights where the defense doesn't play well. You could expose your goaltender. We saw that last night, and that's exactly what happened. You're saying Bersois was exposed last night? What? 
What do you well, do? other than well, yeah, of course, the uh, top shelf shot. I can't There's stop. No one's stopping that. that, Tony. You're not. If you're not going to stop, he's I not told you. Stop yeah, it. but that's his major weakness, and he still hasn't fixed it. Come on, man. <laughs> no, but <laughs> they really do need to. If, if they break down the way that they did last night, and they don't play stinking respectful hockey, this is what can happen. This is what exactly could happen with this team. It's been all on the defense to win games for VGK. Let's face it, and, and that's fair. Starting off. And, and again, during the five-game win streak, that's how they were scoring goals from their defense. Defense turning into offense. So All fair, Tony. And that's been the VGK's MO since day one. The rush up the ice and that first pass from, from a Shea Theodore to get things going. And now Petrangelo. Um, a concern that I do have is when the goalie's playing the puck to a defenseman. And the defenseman is trying to chip the puck around the boards. And it's not connecting with one of our players. You saw that against Tampa. Braden McNabb is, I'm very critical of Braden McNabb for a lot of turnovers lately, although the coach has been very high on him. So what do I know? And you saw a couple of times last night where Brassois goes out, plays the puck. And I get the defenseman has two choices at that point. They can chip it around the glass and hope, or you make a high danger play through the middle. So you're going to choose the lesser of the two evils. But that is something that that initial breakout, not the transition, but the initial breakout when the defenseman is in trouble, having, you know, two solid options for that player to make a play. So that's a concern there. If it doesn't connect, it can bite, it can bite them and knock on wood. None of the goals last night seem to be turnovers, but there's been previous games where those poor turnovers have led to bad things like Saturday against Tampa, right? Braden McNabb uh, turns the puck over leads to an icing Tampa scores right off the ensuing face off. So it, you know, there's a lot of ways to look at that. That is something that, and it's not a VGK thing, I'm sure every team, but that's something that VGK does have to clean up in these last 25 games. Okay, coming up uh, tomorrow, of course, we will be previewing the four-point game against Cal Gary, which yeah. now is 10 points behind the VGK, but they could close that gap, as we'll find out tomorrow. We'll preview that game and have much, much more for everyone out there. Of course, thanks again for making us your first listen each and every day. Follow us, of course, on Twitter at Lockdown VGK. A lot of fun, Chris comments there. Uh, we had the Mount Rushmore meme yesterday, or someone <laughs> did a good job with Photoshop putting Vegas. I'd want to ship a chef up there better, but whatever. wasn't that funny though? <laughs> our folks are so creative. A lot of our followers, and we really do appreciate it. Keeps us on our toes as well. And of course, follow us on the YouTube channel. Uh, the right show will be up today. <laughs> Unlock that Golden Knights. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going on record saying the right show is going up. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> For my man Chris Golick, we appreciate you all tuning in. I'm Tony Cardasco. See you tomorrow right here on Locked On Golden Knights.